people from a traditional offline visual effects backgrounds like me uh, might not even completely understand what real-time visual effects are, although you certainly have seen them if you've played games. I am Sunny Tyke and I'm a effects artist and for the past two or so years I've been teaching and doing research as part of the faculty for the Master of Design Technology program at Victoria University of Wellington. Real-time rendering is what needs to happen when a user is controlling where the camera is pointed, so you know, games, VR. Since there's no way of predicting where any given user will choose to look at any given time, a game engine like Unreal needs to be able to generate those images on the fly, kind of so quickly that to the viewer it'll appear seamless. And VR is extra restrictive because now you need to render something in real time, not just from one camera, but from two, so both eyes. Um, and there's serious frame rate restrictions depending on the specific headset to ensure that the viewer doesn't become ill. <laughs> um, so the Oculus Rift, for example, has a 90 frames per second frame rate requirement. So, you know, that means your effect needs to be rendered 90 times from two cameras in one second. So the challenge in doing real-time effects in VR is really in figuring out how to give something as much visual complexity as possible without tanking the frame rate. So Minimum Mass is a six degrees of freedom, 20 minute cinematic VR experience, which was developed in Unreal Engine. The effects of Minimum Mass are these surreal moments that externalize the emotional state of the characters to the viewer as we watch these scenes unfold. That was my challenge and focus on the project. Like, how do I bring as much complexity and realism as possible to these effects moments in VR. There were three key effects areas where I relied pretty heavily on Houdini. One was destruction, another was dark matter, and the third was an environment that we called the void. So there are several moments of destruction that occur in scene as a story point. So at one point, a bathtub breaks apart and floats away around Rabia. At another point, the characters are jogging and a sinkhole suddenly forms nearby. It was pretty straightforward to create the destruction simulations as I normally would in Houdini using rigid body tools and export them into Unreal as skeletal meshes using the Side Effects Labs tool RBD to FBX. Uh, and the main area of friction there was just a limitation on the number of RBDs I could use. I also applied static destruction to a lot of our environments, and I did a lot of that using Houdini. Our environments were designed to look like floating islands that had been torn out of larger structures, um, either an outdoor environment that had been ripped out of the ground or a room that had been ripped out of a building. So that pipeline was a process where I would ingest the rough geometry we used to kitbash our scenes and rebuild it in ways where I could rip chunks out of it um, and add terrain and destruction details and make a low poly version, but hang on to the high poly version to create normal maps. Dark matter was an effect that occurred throughout the story at times where loss makes the characters feel alienated from their own bodies, from one another. Um, in some sense, this was a pretty literal interpretation of an effect. So literal darkness takes over the character and the environment. The dark matter development process, I tried a lot of things in Houdini to begin with. I originally conceived of this as a fluid simulation that I would make in Houdini and get into Unreal somehow. I eventually started to feel too limited by the size of the files themselves in fluid simulation meshes. 
I eventually landed on a solution of using Cascade particles. Cascade is one of Unreal's native particle tools, and then I augmented those simulations by generating vector fields in Houdini from the environment surfaces and curl noise. Um, so this allowed me to create fake complex interaction between the cascade particles and the environments and the characters in Unreal. So the void is an eerie, surreal environment that the viewer returns to several times throughout the experience. And it was originally intended to be visualized as more of a traditional black hole. So, you know, volumetric, emissive, nebular shapes. I started by trying to create those volumes in Houdini, but I quickly realized that rendering high resolution volumes in VR was not gonna be possible. Um, so then I started exporting those volumes as meshes uh, and playing with using emissive and transparent materials in Unreal to try to make them look more volumetric. But when I looked at that stuff in the headset in Unreal, I realized that emissive materials that stymie natural lighting are really unconvincing in VR. So the failure of an object to interact with light accurately really makes our eye disbelieve it. Uh, and this led me to design the structures in the void as more organic, opaque objects. I built those shapes in Houdini using curves and curl noise, and then I brought those into Houdini as just straight up meshes. But what was so interesting to me here was that the medium of VR itself led me to design the environment in a more organic way than I had originally intended. So it made it more womb-like and that actually resonated much more clearly with the themes of the story but that wasn't the intention it was the design process that brought us there so houdini was a totally invaluable tool for making the shape and the behavior of these effects uh, visually complex in unreal both because it's the tool that I'm familiar with and the language that I'm fluent in, um, but also because after having done a pretty deep dive into the techniques that are out there for effects game dev, the consensus seems to be that Houdini is often the most powerful tool to do certain things. And there really seems to be a growing interest in Houdini from the game dev community. Um, and the development of more sophisticated workflows between Houdini and Unreal is only making that interplay between the two softwares like even more exciting. In pretty much every single instance, I used Side Effects Labs tools to export the data that I was making into something that was usable in Unreal. Um, and as a consequence of that, investigating the labs tools was just a really good starting point for me in understanding what was possible. So Minimum Mass was created as a festival experience for the Oculus Rift S, uh, which is a tethered headset, although it's also playable on the HTC Vive. Over the past six months, Minimum Mass has been shown at venues like the Venice Biennale, Tribeca, Annecy. It isn't currently being shown anywhere, but we really hope it'll show in a few more festivals and many of those make it available for people to view online. Um, and then eventually we hope to find a more permanent home for it somewhere because we really want as many people to be able to download it and see it as possible. And we will absolutely be publicizing future opportunities to see it if you follow us on Instagram at Minimum Mass.